G'day, I'm Clive and welcome. Another long term review. Now, I've had this probably close to five years or more. I think it came out in about 2018, so I said about six years ago. It's a Petzl Bindi headlamp or head torch, whatever you want to call it. Now, I've been quite surprised with this. I've had other larger ones where you put the batteries in, brighter lumens and all that stuff. And I've used this now, like I said, for about five years. And I haven't used any of the other since. And as I go through this video, you'll understand why I haven't gone back to the others yet. And the word yet, there's a reason for me saying that. But then again, I might just buy another one. Petzl. Bindi, weighing at 35 grams, super lightweight. Three light settings on it, well there's four or five if you want to include all the different features. We've got the button on top here. And we press that once, we get the six lumens, press it a second time, start again, 6 lumens, press it again, 100 lumens, and press it one more time, and we'll get 1, 2, 3, and we'll get it 200 lumens, and turn it off. So now that should go back to the 6 lumens, so I've got so there we go, back to the 6, 100, 200, and off. Now if we leave that a little bit longer now, we'll have to press it uh, once, and then again straight away to get the second one. We can't really click then wait, as you noticed. There's a low one, and if I wait now, I think it was about 5 or 10 seconds we had, and I clicked it again, and it went off. So we're going to click it once, twice, three times to go through the actual light settings and off again. Now if we hold the actual on off button we get the red light which for those who haven't used one of these before or understand about the red light the red light is for night time use really. If you're around a crowd of people and you don't want to blind each other, this gives you enough light where you can see a couple of meters. Also, once you get your night eyes used to the night without any lights, using the red one to brighten it up a little bit then turning it off is not going to affect your eyesight. So you're not going to have that white flash that I've got at the moment from pointing the head torch at me. Now if you press it one more time whilst it's in the red mode, uh, let's go to red mode, press it one more time, it goes into emergency mode. Now it's not SOS, it's just a constant flash. So if you have hurt yourself and you're waiting to be rescued or picked up, that constant flashing is going to be noticed. So again we'll press that and it goes off. So press it, run the red, then go back from the red to the white light We'll just press and hold it, press it again, hold it, and it goes over to the white. And then we can go through the different lumens. Now like I said, it weighs 35 grams, so when you're wearing it, you don't notice most of the time. The cord is just a bungee cord, it's not a big thick strap that when you're wearing it, you end up sweating underneath it. And it's got a, a little reflective in it also. So that will light up if anybody puts a torch on it or you've put it down and you get your hand torch, you'll move it around and this will glow so you can find it easier. Now there's two ways of preventing turning this on and wasting your battery. And some of you may have known or heard of other people where they've put it in the pack the on button's been knocked and when they come to use it the batteries have been flat. The first way is they call the analog. So all we're going to do is we turn that around and now 
as you can see, it's locked in place. And to get to the on off button, which is underneath there, you're going to have to move that back around and click back around to here. And there's no click to get it move into place. It's just when you lock it into place. So listen. Now that's locked to unlock it, unlocked. And then there's no sound as I turn it around. Now because this is so light and the actual grip on it, it's at the point where it's easy to move, but not easy enough for it to slide down on its own whether you're running. I've just been watching somebody else's video, he's a, he's a runner, and he's never had his slide down. You can feel it gripping as you move it about. Uh, I've never had it fall on me because I don't, don't go diving off things and jumping and running around anyway, so I couldn't tell you 100%, that's why I mentioned the other channel. Getting back to the head strap, it's about three or four millimeter bungee with a reflective in it, and we've got a line lock on it. So nice and easy, you're gonna put that on, pull the line lock, just tight enough to hold it. You don't need it super tight because of how light it is. And have I got it right way around? Yep. <laughs> you just turn it on to whatever you want. Now I use this a lot and anybody who follows my channel knows that when I go bushwalking I'm normally up and on my way by about the four o'clock, 4.30ish. Not very often, much later than that. So whilst using this, once I've got my night vision, if I do put the white light on, I just use the six lumens. And that's just enough to give me where I can see the track or any spider webs. And if you're walking on the Bilberman track, they've got little things are called warbles, a little triangle and they point you whichever direction you've got to go. And when the light, even on the low six lumens, that'll light up. Now if I turned it up to the 100 lumens, that actually lights up those little reflective wargles from sometimes about 150, 200 meters I've noticed, but because of the walking in the bush and winding, I haven't tested it any further than that. But if you are walking the Bibbulmun track and you're using this and you're looking for the wargles and you're walking at night, you'll be surprised at how well it does light them wargles up. And it's actually easier to see them at night with this than in the daytime. Well, that's my opinion, opinion and that's what I find. Now, waterproof, it's, uh, it's not waterproof, it's weatherproof. And to help protect it, they've got a coating on all the electrics on the inside to help prevent any moisture getting in there and ruining the actual electrics and ruining your little head torch. Now I'm going to come back to that again in a second. I just checked their website and what they say is its lifespan is either three years or 300 recharges. Now I've had this now five years and as you can see it's still working great now going back to that water resistance that would be like if you're walking in the rain or you've got a bit of snow or a bit of mist they don't recommend that you dunk it under water leave it to float because they say it good chance that it will get through to the electrics and ruin this now saying that I was wearing this, I had my little down jacket on, started to be able to see without it, shoved it in my pocket, did the zip up, carried on hiking for the day. Got home that evening, because it was my final day, and I threw the down jacket in the wash, in the special down cleaner. Took it out of there, threw it in the tumble dryer took it through the tumble dryer, nice and dry. Four months later, 
I picked my down jacket up, put my underzipped it, put my hand in the pocket, found I'd left this in it. It actually went through a full wash and also a full dry in the tumble dryer. So that got a bit of a banging around in there and that still works. So they don't recommend that you do that, but the water resistance going by this one, the ruggedness of it going by this one, they're pretty damn good. So what else can we say about it? Ah, I've only mentioned one lock in one, didn't I? Just prevent you pressing the button by the analog by moving it back and holding it and it locks in place so you can't get to the on off button. Uh, the charger is a micro USB which is provided when you buy them and if you're anything like me you've probably got four or five laying around from other devices going over the years. But the other way of locking this is the on off button. You press and hold that for four seconds. Then you've got that little red, there it goes. So as you saw then, the red light came on, then the white light came on, and then the red light flashed. Now that is locked. So now if I press that, that'll flash to tell me it's locked, but the light won't come on. Now they said there's two ways. Now, see if I'm not pressing it properly when I come to do this, but when it comes to unlock it, they say you can press it four times and then you should get it to unlock. So let's give that a go. One, two, three, four. No, one, two, three, four. Press and hold. No, I have to press and hold it for the time. Let's try that again. Off. Let's go to the press again. Here we go. Hold one, two, locked. Press and hold one, two, three, four, unlocked. Oh no, still locked. One, two, three. Ah, you got to hold it. Now I haven't used that lock set. Before I will just flick it over and never had a trouble with it. One, two, three, four, flash, locked. So, yep, locked. One, two, three, unlocked. So the white light comes on straight away when you unlock it by holding it. So, again, one, yep, all working. Uh, that's good to know myself. Now the little light beside that normally goes red, when it's at 100% down to 66% it's green and I think they say between 66% and 33% is amber. Then once you get into the 33% down it, uh, it comes on as red. So that light is actually a gauge of how much power you've got left in the little Petzl Bindi. Comfort wise, I've put it on my head and I forgot I've had it there and I've walked whilst it's been daylight for two or three hours before I've remembered I got it up there. So it's, I find it comfortable. Now I keep saying I because other people don't, but I find it comfortable because it's so light, so easy to use. And nine times out of 10, it's actually on top of my hat or on my beanie so it's even more comfortable because it's not putting any pressure and because of the bungee cord that actually sits nice in my beanie material so it's not going to be slipping or moving anyway so and the actual shape of this for your head it's, I don't know if you can see it's move it you've got that curve to it that actually sits nice on my head it's as if it was made for me some people say it's uncomfortable and they've got to keep moving it at different positions but I haven't found, found that. I found it really comfortable. Uh, nothing else on there now. That's my normal. I keep babbling on and going backwards and forwards and remembering. Uh, honest review is the best way to do it. So that's a long term review of the Petzl Bindi head torch. 
So they do still sell these. Here in Australia, I just had a look at one of the local outdoor stores. They're selling them for $99.99, that's Australian. And another guy I've just seen in the UK, he picked his up for, I think he said 39 pounds, which is about $80 equivalent. And American, that, what's that? That's going to be about the, probably, uh, what's that, about 75, $80? So that's a guess. So hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, and you're not already a subscriber, please go down below, click on the subscribe button, click on the notification bell next to it, and select all, so you can be notified of all upcoming videos. And hit the like button and thumbs up button, remember. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much. Hehehe. <laughs>